In this video, we're going to talk about electric dipoles, how to calculate the electric dipole moment, the torque, and also how to calculate the potential energy as well. So let's go ahead and begin. So what exactly is an electric dipole? An electric dipole is the combination of two charges, one positive, one negative, and both charges have the same magnitude but opposite signs, and they're separated by a distance which we'll call D. So this line is known as the dipole axis. The electric dipole moment is simply the product of the charge times the separation distance. So this charge is positive Q and here we have negative Q. So P is just Q times D. The electric dipole moment has the units coulombs times meters. So that's how you can calculate the magnitude of the electric uh, dipole moment. Now what's going to happen if we place the dipole inside an electric field? So let's say the electric field is directed towards the right. And we have a dipole inside it. What's going to happen to the dipole? Now a positive charge will fill a force that will accelerate it in the direction of the electric field. So the positive part of the molecule feels a force that pushes it towards the right. The negatively, the negative charge part of the dipole molecule will feel a force that will accelerate it towards the left. So in this case, there's a force of compression. However, the net force acting on the dipole is zero. These two forces, they're equal and opposite in magnitude. Now what about if the dipole was in the opposite direction? Let's say it was oriented uh, this way, inside the electric field. What's going to happen? So the positive charge will still feel a force directed towards the right, and the negative charge will feel a force directed towards the left. In this case, the dipole is being pulled apart, so to speak. It's expanding due to the electric field. However, the net force is still equal to zero. So the net force of an electric dipole always adds to zero, as you can see. Now, what about a different situation? Let's say The dipole is uh, the dipole axis is vertical relative to the horizontal electric field. So let's say it's perpendicular to it. What's going to happen? So the positive charge will feel a force that's going to accelerate it in the direction of the electric field, and the negative charge will feel a force that will accelerate it opposite to the direction of the electric field. So relative to the center, this dipole will experience a torque. Imagine this as being the top view of a door and here is like the axis of rotation. If you apply a force, that force will create a torque which will cause it to rotate. The torque is the product of the force and the lever arm. The lever arm is the perpendicular distance between the axis of rotation and the line of action of the force. So this is the lever arm. So in this case, the line of action is basically the line that's parallel to the force, and the lever arm is the distance between the line of action and the axis of rotation, which is here. So the red force will create a torque that is uh, clockwise. And the blue force will also create a torque that's also uh, clockwise. Let's call this uh, T1 and T2. Because both torques are in the same direction, they're additive. So the net torque is the sum of these two torques. T1 
is basically f times l. And the same is true for t2. It's f times l. Now the distance between the two charges is d, which means that l is half of d. So therefore, uh, t1 is going to be f times d over 2, and t2 is also f times d over 2. So therefore, the net torque of this dipole, when it's in this particular position, is simply f times d. It's the force acting on it times the length of the dipole. Now, the force acting on a charge inside an electric field is equal to the charge times the electric field. So F is equal to E times Q. So the electric field times the charge times the distance is equal to the net torque in this particular example. Now, over time, the t uh, electric dipole is going to rotate. So let's say it's at this position. Let me draw a new picture. I'm going to need to draw like a much uh, bigger one. So you can see everything clearly. So let's say the dipole has rotated by some amount. And we still have the electric field. And let's say this is the center. I'm going to draw the electric field line passing through the center. So this entire distance is simply d, and this portion is half of d. Now this angle is the angle between the electric field vector and the dipole axis, which is uh, basically this line here. Now we said that the torque is the product of the force and the lever arm. So where exactly is the lever arm in this example? To find the lever arm, let's draw the force. The force acting on the positive charge is in the direction of the electric field. Now let's draw the line of action of the force. To do that, simply extend the force in both directions. The lever arm is the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force, which is what we drew, and the axis of rotation, which is right here. So this distance here is known as the lever arm. So therefore, the torque is the product of the force and the lever arm. So that distance L is equivalent to this distance as well. So let's turn this into a triangle. I'm going to put it in a different color. So we're going to make this into a triangle. But I'm going to draw it separately. So this distance here, we know it's d over 2. And here we have our angle, which is right here. And this side is opposite to it. We know that sine is associated with the opposite side. So this side is d over 2 times sine of this angle. So this segment of the triangle is equal to the lever arm. So we could say that the torque acting on just this top portion of the dipole is F times L and L is equal to D over 2 times sine of the angle. So torque is F D over 2 times sine. And that's just T1. T2 is also equivalent to this. So the net torque, which is T1 plus T2, or tau1 plus tau2, I keep saying T, it's a habit. It's F times D over 2 times sine plus another F D over 2 times sine. A half plus a half is a whole. So the net torque is simply F times D times sine of that angle. And F, if you recall, it's the electric field times the charge. 
So here's the equation for the net torque based on the angle. Now we can express the net torque in terms of other variables. But let's begin by rewriting the equation that we just uh, had. So the net torque is the product of the electric field times the charge times the separation distance times sine of the angle that is between the dipole axis and the electric field vector. Now we said that the electric dipole moment is the product of the charge times the distance. This gives you the magnitude. So we can replace QD with P. So the net torque can be described in terms of the electric dipole P times the electric field E times sine of the angle between them. So that's how you can calculate the magnitude of the torque if you have the dipole moment and the electric field. In its vector form, the net torque is the cross product of the electric dipole moment vector and the electric field vector. You don't need to write the sign in this expression. So this is how you could find the magnitude, and if you wish to express it in vector form, you can use that equation. So now let's talk about that equation. So here's the electric field directed towards the right. And let's draw the dipole moment in this form. So here's the separation D, which is also the dipole axis. Now the electric dipole moment vector is directed towards the positive charge, away from the negative charge. So that's the dipole moment vector. And the electric field vector is in this direction. So the angle between the dipole moment vector and the electric field vector, which is the same as the dipole axis and electric uh, field, that angle in this example we can see is 90. And we know that the net torque is the product between the dipole moment, the electric field, and sine of that angle. So sine 90 is equal to 1. So therefore, the net torque in this example is at 100% of its maximum value. So whenever the dipole moment is perpendicular to the electric field vector, the torque is at its maximum value. Now let's say if it's at a 45 degree angle. So here's the electric dipole moment. Here's the electric field. And the angle between them is 45 degrees. Sine 45 is about 0.707. So the net torque is around 70.7% of its maximum value. Now eventually, as the dipole continues to rotate, it's going to reach its most stable position. And that occurs when the dipole moment is parallel to the electric field. So in this case, the dipole moment is directed towards the right, and the electric field is directed towards the right. So the angle between them is zero. Sine of zero is equal to zero. So in this case, the net torque is at its minimum value. It's equal to zero. So the electric dipole is stable in this position. Now let's say if we have a box. If we apply a force on this box and we cause it to be displaced, work is being done on the box. Work is the product of the force and the displacement. Now in the case of the dipole, the electric field 
that acts on its dipole creates a force that causes it to turn. The force creates a torque and the torque causes it to rotate. So in this case, whenever you have a torque which causes an object to rotate, rotational work is being done on the object. The rotational equivalent of force is torque and the rotational equivalent of displacement is angular displacement. So we can say that dW is equal to the torque times d of this angle. And we know that the torque is the product of the dipole moment times the electric field times sine of that angle. Right now the angle is 90 degrees. However, over time, once the dipole reaches its stable position, when it's in this orientation, the electric field and the dipole are parallel, so the angle is now zero. Notice that the angle decreases from 90 to zero. Therefore, we need to put a negative sign in front of this equation. So the position changes. Let's call this position one and this position two. Anytime you change the position or the orientation of an object, you change its potential energy. Let's say if you take a rock and you lift it from ground level to some height above the ground, the potential energy will change. The potential energy is different when the rock is on the ground compared to when it's above ground level. Likewise, for objects that can rotate, if you change the angular position from 90 to 0, you're changing the potential energy of the system. Now, according to the work energy principle, work is equal to the positive change and the kinetic energy. If the potential energy increases, the kinetic energy decreases and vice versa. So work can be described as the negative change in potential energy. And thus we need the negative sign. So now what can we do at this point? First, let's make some space. Let's replace T or torque with a PE sine of the angle. So we could say that a DW is equal to negative the electric dipole moment times the electric field times sine of the angle times the differential of the angle. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find the antiderivative of both sides. The antiderivative of dW is simply W. Now since we have the differential of the angle, we're going to treat the angle as a variable and PE as constants. So let's move the constants in front of the integral symbol. And we're going to integrate the function from one angle to the other angle. So what is the antiderivative of sine? The antiderivative of positive sine is negative cosine. and we need to evaluate it from angle 1 to angle 2. So these two negative signs will cancel. And so this is going to be positive PE. Now let's replace the angle with angle 2. So that's going to be a cosine angle 2 minus cosine angle 1. So this is the equation for the work. Now let's distribute PE into this expression. So the work is equal to PE cosine of angle 2 minus PE cosine angle 1. Now we know that work is equal to the negative change in potential energy. And potential energy is typically described as capital U. 
The change in potential energy is the final potential energy, which we'll call U2, minus the initial potential energy. So if we distribute the negative sign, this is going to become negative U2 plus U1. So work is equal to negative U2 plus U1. So negative U2 is equivalent to PE cosine angle 2. So now let's move the uh, negative sign to the other side. So U2 is going to be equal to negative PE cosine angle 2. So this equation gives us the potential energy of the electric dipole at some angle. And the difference between these two values can help us to calculate the work in rotating the electric dipole from one position to another position using the electric field. Now let's take a minute and review just some of the important equations that we came up with. So the magnitude of the electric dipole is simply the product of the charge times the separation distance. So that's the first equation we want to keep in mind. To calculate the net torque, it's simply equal to the magnitude of the electric dipole moment times the electric field times sine of the angle that's between the dipole moment and the electric field. So keep this in mind. Let's say this is the positive charge and here's the negative charge. The dipole vector, the electric dipole moment vector, is directed towards the positive charge. And let's say here we have the electric field. The angle is between the electric dipole moment vector and the electric field. So just make sure you understand that. Now the next equation you need to keep in mind is that the electric force is equal to the charge times the electric field. And torque can be described as FD times sine of the angle. The potential energy of the system is negative PE times cosine of the angle. And to calculate the work to move the electric dipole from one position to another position, it's equal to PE cosine angle 2 minus cosine angle 1. Now go ahead and take a minute and work on this example. So let's begin. An electric dipole has charges 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs and a separation distance of 0.25 nanometers. We have the electric field. What is the magnitude and direction of the electric dipole moment? So let's calculate the magnitude first. The magnitude of the electric dipole moment is represented by P and it's equal to the product of the charge times the distance. We have the charge. It's 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And we have the separation distance. It's 0.25 nanometers, which is 0.25 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. So the electric dipole moment is positive 8 times 10 to negative 29 coulombs times meters. So that's the magnitude of the electric dipole moment. Now what about the direction? If you recall, the electric dipole moment is directed from the negative charge to the positive charge, which is the case in physics. In chemistry, the dipole moment is directed from the positive charge to the negative charge. It's reversed in chemistry. So in this particular case, from a physics perspective, 
the electric dipole moment is directed in a positive y uh, direction. So as a vector, we can say it's uh, 8 times 10 to the negative 29 coulombs times meters along the positive j axis, which is associated with the positive y axis. So you can just say it's 8 times 10 to the negative 29 j. If you ever need to use a vector notation, just remember i is associated with the x values, j is associated with the y values, and k is associated with the z values. Now let's move on to part b. What is the force on each charge, and what is the net force on the entire uh, dipole? So on the positive charge, the force is directed to the right, and on the negative charge, it's on the left. These two forces have the same magnitude. And the magnitude of the force is basically the charge times the electric field. The charge is 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19 uh, coulombs, and the electric field is uh, it's 4 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. So the unit coulombs cancel, giving us the force in newtons. So let's multiply these two numbers. So therefore, the force acting on each charge is 1.28 times 10 to the negative 12 newtons. Now this force is positive because it's directed towards the right. The other force is negative. Therefore, the net force adds up to zero. There's no net force acting on the dipole. Now what about part C? Calculate the potential energy at an angle of 90 degrees and also at an angle of 30. So let's say if it's like this. Let's say the angle is 30. So we want to find the potential energy at these two positions. So let's start with the 90 degree angle. The equation for the potential energy, it's negative PE cosine of the angle. So we have P already. That is the uh, electric dipole moment, which was the product of Q and D. So P is 8 times 10 to the negative 29. Let's not forget the negative sign. The electric field is 4 times 10 to the 6, and then multiplied by cosine 90. Now, cosine 90 is 0, so the potential energy at this position is at a minimum value. It's equal to 0. Now, what is the potential energy at an angle of 30 degrees? So it's P, which is 8 times 10 to the negative 29 times the electric field, times cosine 30. So this is equal to negative 2.771 times 10 to the negative 22 joules. So now how can we calculate the work required to move the electric dipole from a position of 90 degrees to 30 degrees. What's the work required? The work is equal to PE times cosine angle 2 minus cosine angle 1. So let's use that formula. Let me erase a few things. So P is 8 times 10 to the negative 29. E is 4 times 10 to the 6. And we're going to multiply it by cosine. Angle 1 is 90. Angle 2 is the final angle, that's 30. So final minus initial, cosine 30 minus cosine 90.
So if you type this in exactly the way you see it, you're going to get positive 2.771 times 10 to the 22 joules. And it makes sense because work is equal to the negative change in potential energy. The potential energy changed from 0 to negative 2.77 times 10 to negative 22. So the change in potential energy was negative, which means work has to be positive, which we can see that. Here the work is positive, and here the change in potential energy, which went from 0 to negative, is negative 2.771 times 10 to the negative 22. So you can use both equations to calculate work as long as you understand the concept. Now what about part E? What is the magnitude of the net torque at 90 degrees? To calculate the magnitude of the net torque, let's use this equation. It's the product of the electric dipole moment times the electric field times sine of the angle. So it's going to be P, which is 8 times 10 to the negative 29 times E times sine of 90. And sine 90, we know it's 1. So this is equal to 3.2 times 10 to the negative 22 newtons times meters.